This is Sean with Gate City. We're on a job today, and I want to talk about a couple of differing opinions here. And the first one is digging all the way down to the footer, which is, this is a full basement, and installing a foundation tile. The other opinion is the one that I happen to have, which is to keep the surface water on the surface. And if you look here, what, what we have going on is the the land up here it just slopes right into the house and boom and then we have water going in the basement if you take a look at the gutters they're not in very good shape either but the guy just paid a bunch of money for gutter guard before he talked to me and so he doesn't want to replace the gutters even though they need to be replaced these are two by three downspouts which are too small for one thing the other thing we have going on is he had these corrugated pipes and didn't know where they went and so the water that was going into the gutters was getting injected in the ground here and it doesn't come out anywhere. And so like I talk about a lot on this channel, think about water accounting. Water in needs to equal water out. And so what we're gonna do today, and, and my contractor friend actually plugged me into this job because he was gonna borrow my excavator. He was gonna dig this down, put a, put a foundation tile in and try to call it a day. And I came over, looked at it and said, no, 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 we need to keep the surface water on the surface. And so that's what we're going to do. That's what my strategy is, is keep the surface water on the surface, divert it away from the foundation instead of sending the surface water that hits this all the way into the foundation, hoping it gets in a pipe and then hoping it flows away. But all that water is being directed towards the foundation. So we're going to talk about that in this video today. And we're also going to do this job here. So I've got about a little over 55 tons of dirt here. This is clay. This is not topsoil. It's got to have zero organic matter in it. And this is going to pack really well. It's going to shed the water away. And that's going to be a big step in keeping the water shedding away from the foundation. So that's what we're working on today. This is an example of what I'm talking about with digging out the foundation and then trying to apply a waterproofing sealant and creating a French drain at the bottom here near the footer. And so I use this picture with the owner's permission, but this is an example of the absolute worst thing you can do. So take a look here. What they've done here is, first of all, they've excavated all this clay and there's no subsurface water here. Now, if you have subsurface water, this may be something you want to do. But the idea comes from the fact that during new construction, you would put in a foundation tile and that's to deal with any subsurface water. And people have expanded and tried to apply that to surface water drainage problems. And this is just, this is absolutely the worst thing you can do. The reason is you're trying to get all the water into the foundation and then you're just hoping that that waterproofing doesn't have a pinhole leak in it. And so in this example, the installer just completely did the absolute wrong thing in injecting the gutter water into this French drain foundation tile system. And so as soon as this pipe gets overwhelmed, that gutter water is being injected into the ground right next to the foundation. And this is the absolute worst thing you can do. So my strategy is to keep the surface water on the surface and away from the foundation. The strategy you're seeing here is to bring the water into the foundation and then hope you can get rid of it. So look at that gutter right there. He's got that gutter piped directly into the foundation. So absolute worst thing you can do here. And this is what a lot of waterproofing companies want to do. Instead of accounting for the water, they just want to disappear it into the foundation. So take a look at this and let me know what you all think. This is also way more intrusive and costly than just just diverting the surface water. So there's an example for you all. Here's a job that we did, a driveway and a drainage system, and the builder convinced the homeowner to dig out the foundation after we had installed our drainage system. So let's take a look. Bunch of kitchen upgrades. They got this walkway in here. They did this retaining wall. And let me show you, they, they kind of took over the drainage stuff that we were gonna finish. 
we were going to put a catch basin in here but instead the builder wanted to dig all the way down and put a, dra a foundation tile in there and you all know that that's not how I like to do it my opinion is keep the surface water on the surface in a catch basin here and so their solution is to let all this water go into the ground to the foundation and then hopefully get into a pipe and flow out so it's just a difference of opinion I don't like doing it that way they also slope this this way which I tried really hard to slope everything that way with the the driveway the driveway is a big piece of this drainage solution so are the pipes here but they also took this grade down a little bit when they dug it out and so I would have liked to have seen it up higher <clears throat> but that's where it's at today so what we're gonna do here these gutters are really not doing what they're supposed to and so all the water lands right here and if you've noticed there's no way for the water the water the land is just sloping right into here so we've got those three loads of dirt here we're just going to pack it like we normally do i'm going to pull the i think that's a holly stump out that actually i think that's boxwood but anyway we're going to catch this gutter come up with a riser up to at least here and then just take it around i'm going to pull this holly and this guy i'm going to try to pull with my little bobcat i forgot i actually forgot about this one so if it doesn't i may have to go get the big excavator and we're going to dump dirt across here just build it up so it slopes away from the foundation we've got a gutter downspout here so again, I want a pretty tall riser on it. And then just along that little that new wall and then just end it out here somewhere. And he's gonna do like a patio, so we may be coming back to finish putting the pipe in. But there's no sense in messing up with the pipe right now when he's gonna be tearing it all up. So we're gonna terminate between here and the wood? Somewhere around there, yeah. Somewhere, mm -hmm. top of the ground? Well, if you wanna maybe halfway in the ground or so, if we can get any fall, that'll work too. Okay but you can see just how much this whole land is going into the foundation so don and his crew built this wall here and we were kind of waiting for them to get that done before we could build it gotcha. so one of the things we need to do is get these once we uh get the pipe in or before we need to get all these leaves blown off of here try to get some of this veg raked out of the way okay. so that our dirt doesn't land on top of the organic matter okay. and then pretty much same thing on the other side We pretty much have the same thing on the other side where the land is just sloping right into it right. and so we're going to pull out these little shrubs and stuff and you can really see how much it's sloping it down right there and he doesn't know where these things come out so the first thing i told him to do was get these disconnected yeah, yeah. because that's just injecting water in the ground and he's got a basement and the basement it's, it's got water in it mm. so same thing over here we're gonna pour or put a little bit of dirt over here catch that gutter bring it around catch this gutter pipe it across here and you know you can be you shouldn't be digging anything around around here we should be fine to, to leave it up above the ground and again you want it about the same as the other one yeah Maybe plant a towel later. Yeah, just just see what we can do and how it how it shakes out. Okay. So basically, that's catching two gutters per side. Correct. So and, and we're just laying around on the ground. Yep. Okay. All right. So, so do you? I'm definitely gonna have to bring my big excavator for that little guy. But let's see if this small machine will get some of these other ones out of here. Mm -hmm. 
anytime you're correcting the grade up against a house like this for drainage purposes, it's extremely important to get the organic matter out of here. And so any bushes or things like that, yeah, but we're really talking about the organic layer of the soil here, so the O horizon. And the reason is because you wanna get down to subsoil and the, the new subsoil that you're installing there, that will fuse with the existing subsoil and form a waterproof layer. Otherwise, if you just dump the, your new dirt on this organic matter, there'll still be a layer there that water can flow through and flow along. Before I mess anything up over here, I wanted to show you this. This is just a deep hole right here, and you can tell where the water just flows in there and goes straight down. Let's see if I can get a judge how deep that is. So, yeah, definitely not shedding water away from the foundation. And we're on a pretty good slope right here going down. So, there's no reason you should have problems here. So, we're going to fix all this today. Okay, I still have to pull this organic matter out, but the guys are getting going over here with this pipe. There's not really any organic matter here. This has just kind of been washing the whole time. And so we're just gonna go with that. I also need to blow the leaves off of our dirt piles because we it's, it's fall time right now. And so the leaves are falling. Importantly, what I got here is I got this organic matter pretty well scraped off of here. There's a little bit here and there. I'm not, I'm not super, super worried about it, but I got the main part. And of course, the reason for that is organic matter holds moisture and organic matter leaves voids in the soil. So I'll talk more about soil when we get back to the shop. And so what I'm gonna do now is start loading up this dirt. Now, what happened here with the gutters, the guy before he talked to me, he just got totally ripped off on gutter guard. He could have done the whole house twice in new gutters with my guy for what he paid for gutter guard. And so I'm trying to get him to, to, to get rid of these two by threes, but he doesn't want to spend any more money on the gutters because he just spent a ton. So we'll be ready for him if these gutters are continuing to overflow or not, not flowing quite right. The other thing I, I really want to do, since that is such a steep roof, I want to add a downspout right here. And so what I want to do is I want to pipe it, do a stub out right there just in case, because that's a huge roof and a lot of water to try to get to stop and then flow horizontally. So anyway, this is pretty well ready to go as well. There was a bunch of communication in here and old wires and 811. I guess you can't see the red line anymore because the leaves and I tore it up, but power is right here. Power's right there, so the line goes like right across here. There should be some remnants of red in, around here somewhere, but I don't see them. But anyway, got all these stumps torn out of here, and so I'm not too worried about a few roots here and there, as long as the main part of the stump is gone. And so Don and his crew got this wall up, so that'll give us plenty of space to shed away, build that up against the wall. And then he had this wire here that was going to the building and that's been disconnected for a long time. So I may pull that out for him. But anyway, it's coming along pretty well so far. So I'm almost ready to start putting some dirt in here. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to get this pipe bedded before we start just dumping tons and tons and tons of dirt on it. So I'm gonna bring some dirt over here. The guys are already getting started. And then we're gonna bed this really well and then we'll get started. Let me bring that pile closer to you. Careful, kid. Okay, I got this pipe really well bedded. It's not going to move around now when we dump dirt on it. 
So that's really, really important that you don't get any bellies or anything in the pipe before you set it, set all this data on top of it. So it's really all better now. Okay, I think I'm ready to start. Got a camera set up right here, so here we go. Yeah. Okay. And if he ever wants to add it, he can. And it's, you know. Do you want the uh, spout same? Yep. And we can put a plug in there too, just for now. Plug? Mm -hmm. Or tape it over? Tape it over, maybe. Uh, we can plug for like 20 bucks. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to stub out right here for a future downspout if he ever needs it. Told the homeowner, keep an eye on this. Make sure the water's not overflowing during the rain. Or you can look at the ground and see if there's a drip line to see evidence of it overflowing. If he does have overflowing, he may want to add a downspout here. If he doesn't, he, he'll probably be okay just leaving it. So either way, He's gonna return straight. stubbing out right now is All the way right, to go. Straight up and down. Okay. All right, push. That's it. Okay, the guy's got the pipe in and I'm going to start dumping some dirt on top of it and getting it bedded. And they are continuing around the side there. So, here we go.
Alrighty, in today's adventures in draining with Gate City Foundation and Drainage, we have a job where we have caught a series of gutters. There is a gutter on that corner. There is a gutter on this corner. We laid the pipe out, have it terminating out here. We may at some point come back and move it out even further. It depends on the homeowner. They're going to be putting in a patio. So it depends on what that patio is going to end up looking like. We have brought in and spread a good bit of dirt. It is a very high clay content such that it is once you compact it going to keep the water basically rolling on down as long as there is a slope. And there is definitely a slope. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a good bit of slope both in this case toward me as we're going down the hill, but also away from the house that way so that we can coax that water away from the house and away from the basement where the homeowner was having problems. We again got this gutter. We got this other gutter on the house. I gotta just finish compacting so that looks all nice for the homeowner there. Same thing for this area right here. The idea we wanna slip it away from the house, high, con high clay content. Basically it's going to shed down and away and around the house. You can see Ronald at work. We basically put in a stub so that at a later point, the homeowner could add a downspout uh, from up there to catch the uh, uh, gutter on the front, uh, halfway instead of just at the corners. We, as we continue down, we caught this gutter, took it at an angle around the chimney. We then came down, angled back around so that we could make a nice T connection so we could drop in that particular drain spout. And we are ending roughly in the same locale as on the other side. And the idea again, we are just ending here for the moment because we don't know what the patio will end up doing. It is worth mentioning that in both cases, I didn't show it on the other side, we do always uh, end, terminate on a flat surface, a flat hard surface, in this case slate. Uh, sometimes we use pavers, it very much depends. This still needs to be compacted, but the idea is that once we're done with this side, it'll look like the other side, and any rain that hits will be sheeting down and away and away from the homeowner's basement. And that's today's adventures in drainage. Thanks, come again. On this side especially and what I tried to do was I tried to give it about the same angle that we're falling this way so we're kind of falling this way and this way at the same so it looks a lot more even so if you look at this I think it looks pretty good And the homeowner wants seed and straw on, it, on, on top of it, so we're, that's what we're doing for him. I guess he's going to try to get these trees trimmed up a little bit, get a little bit more light in here and get some grass growing. And really, if he can keep on top of the leaves, I think that should be fine. I'm going to be bringing my big excavator over to pull this out. So I left myself a nice pile there to feather all this out whenever, whenever that's finished. So what do you all think about keeping the surface water on the surface as opposed to sending it into the foundation? Different, differing opinions for sure. So I guess I'll be back over here to pull that bigger stump out. And for now we're getting our seed and straw on here and we'll be out of here shortly. So I tried to build it out so this water is going to kind of swing out 
a little bit here and away from that foundation. So it's looking pretty good. It just stopped raining, but talking to the homeowner, everything's working really well so far. He did have this line redone out to his little building here. So he wanted to make sure we were done before he did all that. There was that other line in there that we saw, but it wasn't hooked to anything. It was just halfway buried. So I don't know. And then the homeowner got all this great gravel in here. And also did this little pathway up to the front door so that's looking really good and this is all looking really good it just stopped raining but check it out there's our dry line you know I love to see that dry line So does the water flow down this hill pretty good? I think it is. Okay, that's good news. I need to get me some, some kind of boot to go around it right here. Yeah, they do make adapters. I don't I usually I use them. On, I think I got one on a piece of pipe somewhere here. Okay. I'm not exactly sure. I hope you all enjoyed this discussion of sending the idea of sending surface water into the foundation or the idea of, of keeping it on the surface and diverting it away from the foundation. So in this, in this project, we had a huge rain about a week and a half ago and there was no water at all in the basement. So the homeowner was really, really happy about that. And this solution has worked very well. Keep in mind, if you have really, really sandy soils or if you dig down and you hit water and just uh, subsurface water, that then this solution may not work for you. You may need to go with the foundation tile style of drainage system and maybe even a pump in there. But in our area, we have pretty much clay subsoil so that we don't get a huge amount of infiltration of water into the ground just, just based on rain and stuff. Most of that happens in lakes and other surface waters. But keep, keep that in mind that your area may differ. But here where we have clay, you definitely don't want to send the water into the foundation like in those previous examples I showed you. So let me know what you all think about that and let me know what you all think. It seems like all the waterproofers around here, they all want to dig down and quote unquote waterproof the foundation and then put gravel up against the foundation and encourage water into the foundation. I don't see it that way. It's a personal opinion. It seems to make more sense to me to divert the surface water, to keep that surface water on the on the surface, and to be able to see that surface water flowing away from the house through the pipe. And so let me know what you all think about this discussion and this, this style of video where I talk more about a technique and use a job to focus on that technique and exemplify it. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you all again for watching, and if you have found any value or entertainment in this video, you know what to do. There are also links in the description where you can support the channel. Thanks again, and happy drainaging.